Oh, this is the last one. Koreans only patronize products of Sony, Toyota, and Honda in their lives. True or false? Oh, false, because those are Japanese companies. That's okay. a trick question. All right, so, so you know the answer as well. Okay, you're a good Korean then. So going back, so uh, going back to individual transformation, no? and you were telling us the steps to it, and how do you go about bringing individual transformation. Can we go back there? Sure. From my experience and understanding, it's very helpful for people to go through a three-step program um, that gives them a basic introduction to their belief systems, mm. what they are and how the belief systems really shape the person's mm -hmm. experience of life. Yeah. And then an advanced course that allows people to... A course or a chat? A coaching interaction or a course? It can be either. Mm -hmm. um, I just have a bias toward OCCI because I'm working with what the people is full, there. What is the full version of OCCI? OCCI stands for Organizational Change Consultants International. And it's a local company. It's a Filipino it's company. It's a local company. Um, it's now um, actually OCCI Global because the company is expanding to give seminars and do consulting all over this region and even um, with plans to do some things in the States. Okay. So it could be a chat or it could be a course. Yes, it could be either one. Mm -hmm. and, but this advanced level interaction would allow people to connect with the essence of themselves. Yeah. To really experience themselves as loving, open, trusting, giving, vulnerable, intimate. All of these kinds of things that truly reflect the core of our being and are all coming from our heart. Let me, let me let me pause here. Uh, so if, if I as a person or any individual that comes to undergoes the transformation where they open up their insights, like they peel themselves apart, right? They put their heart out on the street, they put their lungs out on the street. Is that not danger for them? Do they not become a walking victim to the hardships of life, to uh, abuse by others? Does, can that happen or does that happen? Well, there are some processes that people do in workshops that open people up in ways right. that make them vulnerable. Yes. Um, when those people give those processes, usually they're trained to help people come back to earth and be grounded and close themselves off adequately. Although I have heard stories in the past about how some people here in this country were so sensitive and they became open and had some difficulties. but. The, what, I'm ex what I uh, was describing has more to do with just being, being able to connect with your essential self and express that essential self easily. So it's not so much about opening up your guts to make yourself vulnerable or exposed in any way. Yeah. It's just simply being able to be loving, be giving, be vulnerable, be trusting more easily through an understanding that that is really who you are and not all of the barriers that uh, usually occur and prevent us from being that way. Some of these barriers, some of these barriers, uh, are they not necessary to survive in this tough world out there? That, it actually depends on what you believe. I mean, there is a belief system that is completely valid that it is necessary. Well, how, how, how exactly would you distinguish that for your client of your client company? How are you able to distinguish that, hey, uh, this is his belief system and this may or may not work for him, keeping in mind the system thinking perspective that uh, things around him might change, things around him might be harmful for him, even though his internal a value system or his belief system drives him towards his desire. How would you be able to f uh, fine tune and distinguish that? What I would do is first recognize that all of us as human beings have a survival instinct mm. and have certain mechanisms that arose for us because we need to survive in this world or we needed to survive at a young age when we were more vulnerable perhaps. Yeah. The second thing is to really clearly identify your belief systems as belief systems and see if it's possible to create some space so that you can become aware of your belief systems and not be so completely attached to them that you can't see any other possibility. Oh, 
words like belief systems and space, they sound new age to many <laughs> people. No? Mm -hmm. uh, try telling this to me in a very practical manner, for my understanding. When, when you say something like uh, belief systems and another space, what does that mean? Uh, mm. Well, um, thank you for bringing it back to the yeah, practical I, uh, because yeah, ultimately yeah. that's what I believe transformation is all about. Yeah. Basically, I would just say to you that you might, if, if I were coaching you, I would say you might want to explore being loving in a situation where you previous, previously thought you had to be another way and see what your results are. And what my reactions are something like, I want to be loving but my friend or my spouse or my my parents don't want to be loving to me i'm always open what if i come from that point of view or from that place as you say how do you rectify that for me as long uh, though there is a belief system in me though there is a desire but yet the layers of protection that i've created for myself have become so hardened and i can't see the difference how do you break away those uh, hardened protection systems around me that's that's a wonderful question because you're touching upon some very subtle points. Yeah, about this can also this can also occur at the organizational level because organizations also create a culture that they forget is a culture. They think that's them, that's their identity. Mm -hmm. So uh, how would you help this? As, uh, how would you help this uh, kind of a person or a group out? Uh, could you uh, focus me on the question? The individual, the individual, the individual, the person who's who created layers and layers of protection for themselves. And even though uh, ah. in, in times of uh, interaction with a coach like you, you are able to glimpse into their beliefs, mm -hmm. but the layers are so mm -hmm. uh, laid thick mm -hmm. that they're hard to cut through. For me, the key is awareness because I think you can always expand your context through awareness and try to see a bigger picture about what's really going on. So you described a situation where you're in relationship with some people and the relationships are not ideal. So it becomes subtle because some people fall into a trap and they fall into a trap which you could call the should trap. The and, should trap. And okay. they say, well, I should be nice to everybody. I should be loving. I should be trusting. I should be open. But there is no such thing as should. Mm. So if I were working with someone who is coming from that perspective, I might see if it's possible for them to see that they're coming from this place of should and that there is no such thing, and then begin to explore what the possibilities are if they let go of this sense of should. It's also very specific to the so situation. So the tools you use are questioning? What do you use? What kind of tools do you use? You ask what are called uncovering questions, which allow someone to keep going deeper and deeper to see what is really happening. And those uncovering questions increase a person's awareness of what's really going on. Right. To the point where you may be able to see what lessons you may be creating at, a, at the highest level for yourself mm. in order to learn something very important about yourself or about life or, or something that and mm. then you capture the truth, so you uncover it, then you capture it. Uh, In what format do you capture it? How do you say, hey, this is the right thing for you, or you're telling me this is the right thing for you. At what moment do you capture it, and how assured are you that that is the truth for that person? For me, it's not a matter of right or wrong, because that's more of truth. a... Truth, truth. For that person, yeah. For uh, that. Again, it's it can be truth, but for me, it's more keyed upon awareness and the question of, let's say you are creating this situation, not not you, but any the particular, individual, the individual, individual is yeah. creating this particular situation mm -hmm. with this relationship that's having these problems. What are the possible lessons that are here for you to learn, and maybe the person in talking would say, oh, this is an opportunity for me to learn and practice forgiveness. Or this is an opportunity for me to truly be vulnerable or open or trusting. So if you have that perspective, it's not necessarily a truth. It's more of an, I think, 
an opening to the possibilities that allow you to make different choices because you're no longer reacting uh, automatically. And how about at a larger group level, at an organizational level? Uh, what kind of processes do you use? The processes that are used are along the lines of presencing and also the specific techniques used to create a, a common vision, mission mm -hmm, statement, mm -hmm. and, and core values. Those are actually uh, things that arise out of very specific practices of you know, writing them down and coming to a consensus of what is our purpose? What is our vision? What are our core values? So that's a more mechanical process. Wonderful, wonderful, great, great stuff, art coach. A coach art for great stuff. Uh, we are coming to the end of this show. It's been great talking to you and great insights that you've shared with us over here. And uh, what I want to do right now is allow you a certain time, a certain amount of time to talk about the Koreans in this country. And maybe speak on behalf of the Koreans to the Filipinos. Uh, give a profile of the Koreans in this country and what good they're doing, just like you are doing, for this country. So you take your time and share a few words about that. Okay, thank you. Well, my understanding is that there are many Koreans here in this country and many more coming every day. And that Koreans first were attracted to this co country because there were opportunities to learn English um, at, a, at a lower cost than going to the U.S. or Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and then Koreans began to understand how nice it could be to live here because the weather's nice, the cost of living is relatively low compared to a city like Seoul. Um, there were communities of Koreans forming and the people are friendly and the economy itself is more open. So the barriers to entry for people... This, so this tough and gruff appearance of Koreans is not the true thing. Yeah. If you watch Korean soap operas... I you, don't, I don't watch. <laughs> I, I try not to either, but uh, my mother does in the U.S you'll see that there's a lot of drama in a lot of romance in, in, in yeah a lot of romance but also a lot of drama and there is a lot of yelling when i grew up <laughs> in america as a korean i also could never understand the yelling but if you go to korea you'll see people fighting and yelling at each other on the street going ay and nay and yeah <laughs> and drinking and it it can be alarming depending on what you're used to but it really is from my experience just part of the culture and uh, the culture itself is very rigid in the sense that it's Confucian in nature. So what you do is dependent on your role that you were born into. And that can make people very uh, constricted in their choices. So because I'm the eldest son, I need to do this, I need to do that. Because I'm the husband, because I'm the father. Whatever my role is, completely obligates me to do all of these very specific things. Okay. All right. Art, so last famous words for, from you for the Korean Filipino communi community that you're connected with to the camera. Well, it, it encourages me to see more and more Koreans coming here and opening up to the joys and, of, and of, of the Filipinos, the joys mm -hmm. that are inherent in the culture and the people and the life here. And I feel that it's just a matter of time before Koreans begin to integrate and allow themselves to become part of this country and see how everyone can really work together and create something new and, and beautiful together. Oh, it's a pleasure. pleasure thank you mine. very much for being on Expat Insights. And thank you for watching Expat Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mandian. I'd like to invite you to an uh, art exhibit by a friend of mine, Rina. Chanko at the LRI building in Garcia Rico and Renzo studio on November 6. She's launching an art exhibit, so come and visit her and the art exhibit will be on up until December 7. So thank you for watching Expand Insights and good night and Mabuhai. Thanks a lot, Art, for being here. Thank you.